Hello, and welcome to the Eve Echo Chamber. Today, more gameplay of Cosmic Anomalies. I finally upgraded my ship. As you can see here, I did something that you should never ever do. I spent basically all of my money to buy this ship. On the bright side, this is our end game ship for this alpha, right? At least according to my skill plan it is. Now I was a bit disappointed that this ship cannot go as far as I thought it could. But it did go farther than the first executioner. And it allows you to make much, much more money. Though, the money making is much more dangerous. Risk and reward go hand in hand. Here you can see the recommended fittings. If it is your first time ever with a ship, I strongly suggest that you check those out to get an idea of what the game says you're supposed to use. For our purposes, running Cosmic Anomalies, the mid-slots are completely unnecessary. In fact, if you use the recommended fitting and you use these mid-slots, you might run into some problems with your ship wanting to orbit at the range of your mid-slots. So again, I would recommend that you set your orbit distance to the optimal of your guns manually. For this Executioner 2, the same as my first Executioner, I use a manual orbit distance of 10 kilometers. My guns have an optimal range of 11.5 kilometers. I use 10 so that even when I use my afterburner, which should push me to a further orbit because I'm at higher speed, I'm still within optimal range. As soon as you buy the advanced version of your tutorial frigate, you can put on the fittings from your tutorial frigate, which should be Mark III by now, and you will be prepared for small fives, small level five anomalies. Continue running small level 5s until you can fully replace your Mark III guns with Mark V guns, and you can replace your afterburner and armor repairer or shield booster with Mark V versions as well. After your ship is fully Mark V fit, you can expand your operations and fight any pirate faction that you want, since you no longer have to wait for new drops for your ship. I was able to successfully complete small fives and medium fives when I was Mark V fit. I could not move on to small sevens. You get to that point and it just takes too long to kill a particular enemy. There was a cruiser, a Maller Guardian enemy, in the small seven that I attempted. It took me 45 minutes to kill that one pirate. If you stay fully committed to frigates, you will be able to go into small sevens and even small nines and only kill the frigates if your piloting skills are good enough. By your piloting skills, I mean you as a player being able to fly manually, not any skills that you train in the game. I am also very sad to inform you of my first loss. I lost the ship today attempting a medium five for a different pirate faction. Sanchez Pirates. This is the first loss I have had in Eve Echoes. However, the ship did very quickly make its value back. I got up to 3 million isk before it died. But I am pretty sure now we have found the farthest you can go as an alpha clone in these kind of ships. Because we could increase skills for frigates more, but only if we were Omega clones. Then you could get the advanced skills that I mentioned before. Advanced Frigate Command, Expert Frigate Command, same for Frigate Defense Upgrade, Frigate Engineering, all of that. But if you become Omega Clones, you also will benefit from those skills, and so the other frigates in our ship tree become better options than these versions. When you see those faces pop up in the bottom left, that's because the number of pilots in local, that is that number in the bottom left of the screen, has changed and I'm seeing if I recognize any of the pilots and think that I have to run away. Did mention that this would be much more dangerous, higher risk, higher reward. We have to go to low sec to find these higher level sites. And when we are in low sec, we can be attacked by any other player who happens to come into our site. But like I was saying, if you become an Omega clone, then you can go to even better frigates than this. When I did my skill plan video, which I'll put a card in this video so you can check out if you haven't seen it already, there is, for this character, a Punisher Assault version up at tier 7 that benefits from the advanced skills that you can only train as an Omega. And of course, you can go beyond Tech 7 as well if you have an Omega subscription. But as an Alpha clone, this ship is actually better than the Punisher Assault because this ship benefits from the basic level skills. The Punisher Assault requires the advanced and expert skills. 
So you see right now as I'm running this anomaly, it doesn't really look very difficult at all. I'm not taking much damage at all. The big danger comes when new waves spawn in, especially when one of them has an enemy that stasis webifies you. You'll see that I always kill the destroyers first. For these sites, those are coercers, the Amar destroyer, because they are the ones who stasis webify. The other enemies put energy neutralization on you, which would drain your capacitor battery, but they need to be in optimal range, and I stay beyond their optimal range with my beam lasers. This is why if you commit to frigates, you should always use the long range weapons if possible, because you'll avoid a whole lot of difficulty just by being out of the range of E-War modules. The typical targeting order I do, destroyers first because they stasis webify, then I move on to any frigates on the field, any of the small targets, because they die quickly and I can remove their damage from the field. Finally, at the very end, I do any cruisers that remain. Remember, I already showed you the fit at the beginning, but this is just Mark III fit. Mark V fit, after you do a few of these and you get your Mark V modules, will run them more quickly, but not as quickly as we did small threes before. The majority of our increased ISK comes from the increased bounties. Enemies in Mark V anomalies are worth much more ISK when you kill them. But in addition, some of the Mark V loot is very valuable as well. Most of the stuff that dropped couldn't really be sold. Nobody was in the market for it, or they farm it themselves. However, if you get any Mark V warp core stabilizers, they are very valuable, because a lot of people are very worried about losing their ships. I think it was in a different site after this, but I had two Mark V warp core stabilizers drop for me, and I sold both of them in a Mar for 300,000 isk each. It's all risk and reward. You can choose to use short range weapons, which are much faster, but much riskier. You can choose to do anomalies only in high sec, which is much safer, but much less potential for profit. Any of you out there with alpha clones that are looking for a way to get into the game to make enough money to go Omega eventually, I suggest you get one of these ships, the second version of the tutorial frigate, fit it out to Mark III, come out to low sec and look for sites like these. Do small fives, and only small fives. Even after you upgrade to Mark V weapons, stick with only small fives. It's very good income, very safe. I took too many risks because I wanted to show you how far these things could go, and I firmly believe that small fives are the farthest you can go until you are Omega and you upgrade your skills farther or your ship farther. Now you will have access to destroyers as well, and destroyers can fit for much more damage and could go farther than these ships can, but they also have disadvantages. They are much slower than the ship. If another player came into my site right now, I could hit that autopilot button and I would be perfectly safe. With a destroyer, there is a small chance that you will get caught. They are slower to align and slower to warp. You can see right now that I'm running my afterburner, even though I typically don't. That's because I have a stasis webifier on me. If you look at the center of the screen, below my ship, those two white symbols there. The one on the left is stasis webifier, which lowers my speed. The one on the right is energy neutralization, where if I am in their range, they steal my capacitor battery. You know that the destroyer is the one stasis webifying me because I told you so. But if you don't know, you can click on the eyeball for the overview change the overview to show enemy ships and it will show that little symbol on top of the ship that is targeting you on the right side of the screen in your overview. But if you are in a small ship like a frigate or a destroyer, you should certainly use your afterburner any time you are stasis webified or any time you are taking too much damage. Running the afterburner increases our speed and makes us take less damage because we are more difficult to hit. However, it also lowers our damage, because our weapons also need to track the enemy. An exception to this is if you use a small, fast missile ship, like the Condor. If you are orbiting around a bigger, slower enemy, then your speed will not lower your damage. Missiles do do less damage to small, fast targets, but in terms of speed, the speed only matters if they are moving away from the site of impact. But if you are orbiting an opponent successfully, 
they are normally not moving fast enough for it to affect your missile damage. You see that as soon as I have killed the enemy that was stasis webifying me, that symbol disappears, and I turn off my afterburner. If you are on low health, then you should leave it running until you recover your health. Most ships this size cannot run the armor repairer or shield booster and the afterburner at the same time forever. This is why I do not always have the afterburner running. In addition, of course, to the fact that we want to raise our own damage, and like I said, turning on our afterburner and increasing our speed lowers our damage in most cases. Another thing I will warn you about in these sites, I do suggest that you loot while you are fighting so that nobody comes in and steals your loot, or if you have to run away, that you have your loot with you when you run. But you need to be careful, because if you tell your ship to loot a box, it wants to stop as soon as it is in range of that box. Most of the time, we can loot while we are orbiting an enemy, because we will come into looting range, which is 10 kilometers, of the wreck that we want to loot. However, if a wreck is farther away, you will see the instructions in the center of the screen below your ship change from orbiting whatever enemy to approaching wreck. If it does that, then when you get in to 10 kilometers of the wreck, your ship will stop. And when we stop, we are going slower. And when we go slower, we take more damage and you might die. This frequently happens to me when I'm not paying much attention and I finish off one wave of enemies, and then I go to loot the wreck dropped by the last enemy, and the next wave of enemies spawns directly on top of me. I almost lost my ship this way before. Because it just so happened that the next wave included an enemy with a stasis webifier. So I was stopped going zero meters per second. Then a destroyer stasis webifies me, and it takes much longer for me to accelerate back to an orbiting speed. So the biggest risks to you running small fives in low sec will be the enemies with stasis webifiers and piloting mistakes that cause you to slow down or to not activate your modules at the correct time. That's the biggest risk to you. The next biggest risk, players entering your site in low sec who then attack and kill you. My entire time using this ship and the executioner before it when I went to low sec with it I have only had one player warp into my sight, and I just hit my autopilot button and ran away as soon as they did. And as I mentioned already, the time that I did lose this ship, it was because I was pushing those boundaries, trying to get the content for you. And I did a Sanchez Medium 5, which I had never run against Sanchez before, and I died horribly on like the third wave. Go ahead, laugh it up. There goes my perfect score on Eve Echoes. I thought all that time an EVE Online would have prepared me, and maybe I could go all of EVE Echoes, never losing a ship. Never mind. I don't know, is it better or worse that it was NPCs that killed me? Because I'm still elite PvPer then, right? Because, like, a player didn't kill me. I still have a 100% kill-to-death ratio against other players. That's pretty good. And I believe right now we just surpassed the time it took me to run a large 3 with the basic executioner the Mark III Executioner. That took me 12 minutes and 15 seconds. I never did put up a video of that one yet. Maybe I'll do another one of those since I lost this ship now. But it goes to show you that as these sites get more and more difficult, even the small ones take a very long time. We are compensated by that with the higher bounties. Like I said, the ship made three million isk in like a day, but still, something to keep in mind. We are also still only Mark III fit in this video. It will be faster when you get Mark V weapons and tank, and you could make it even faster by using rigs. I would suggest damage rigs on the left side of the rig screen, and then on the right side of the rig screen, I would do astronautics rigs, specifically, probably polycarbon engine housing, which makes your agility go up. This means that you turn faster, can orbit, at a higher speed, and it will also make you align and warp out faster if you ever have to run away. The damage rigs for lasers would be Collision Accelerator and Burst Aerator. For missiles, it is Warhead Calification Catalyst and 
bay loading accelerator. Sorry, I'm not sure about those because I don't remember them off the top of my head. In EVE Online, I normally went with tanking rigs, which for armor are auxiliary nano pumps or trimarks. Auxiliary nano pump if you have a repairer, and trimarks if you just want to have a big health pool. Here we go again. Last wave. Again, I target the destroyer first, though I'm not sure this destroyer has a stasis webifier. I've also noticed sometimes that if I'm running the afterburner, they do not stasis webify me. And then I say, oh, they don't have a stasis webifier. I'll turn it off. And as soon as I turn it off, they do stasis webify me. As you do these sites more and more, you will recognize the names of the enemies who do have a stasis webifier and the enemies who don't. And as you saw, that's exactly what happened. I turned off my afterburner, then I got stasis webified. I opened my overview, as I told you before, to check who was stasis webifying me. And there was a visual glitch. This is why I open it again now, to refresh it, and you see it looks correct now. Because in the center of the screen it shows a number next to the symbol to show you how many of those are on you. And before it was showing me that both of the frigates were stasis webifying me, but I only had one webifier on me. I refresh the overview, and it's correct now. Just to reiterate again what my targeting order is, I target the destroyer first, because usually the destroyer is the one with the stasis webifier. Then I target both frigates in this wave, because frigates die fast, and we can eliminate their DPS. Just uh, lower the chance of people getting lucky shots on me. Then finally, I finish with the cruiser, and when the cruiser's by himself, they normally cannot hit me at all. This targeting priority might also be because I'm always flying frigates. The frigates and destroyers are the ones who will drop the loot that I want. They have the possibility of dropping Mark V small weapons, but the cruisers will drop cruiser-sized weapons. And who flies cruisers? Did you see that wallet spike? Not bad. I showed you at the beginning of the video that I went down to 8,000 isk. I'm already at 1.7 million at this point. I can already buy another one of these ships. While I do not suggest this for new players, and that's why I'm not tagging this video with hashtag new pilot guide, I do not think new players should go to Losec. It does show you how much profit you can make if you're willing to take the risk. And oh, look, this is what happens when you don't turn on your afterburner when somebody has a web on you. This is one of my own bad habits. When you look at the fitting screen, it shows you how long your capacitor will last if you are running everything. I have plenty of capacitor battery to run the afterburner, the armor repair, and my guns for quite a bit. But force of habit and knowing the danger of going to zero capacitor, I'm very reluctant to run my afterburner. But this also does a good job of showing you the dangers of low sec once again. You saw that when that happened, when I forgot to turn on my afterburner, I was busy looking at local. Because local keeps going up and down this entire video. Up, down, up, down. And they're all different players, too. None of these names I recognize. This will settle down a bit after the game has been around and after people get established in home systems. This is why people often say nullsec is safer than lowsec. Because people in nullsec have their entire crew with them all the time. People really own the space, and you don't want to go into space that somebody else owns. Losec has always been more of a free-for-all, but you can get around this a little bit because you'll learn the habits and the people who hunt, and the people who don't hunt. Use this time of chaos and upheaval to form good habits, to never go AFK in Losec, to always pay attention to the enemies around you and to the people in local. And as I mentioned like two minutes ago, this is the last wave, so I'm gonna save us both approximately five minutes and cut to the end. Thank you for watching. This has been the Eve Echo Chamber. Fly safe.